Today we're going to be talking about the new accessibility features on iOS 14, both for the iPhone and the iPad. Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to The Blind Life, where I teach you how to live your best blind life. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, turn on post notifications so you'll be alerted every time I put out a video just like this one. Before we get started, a huge shout out to my buddy Owen, Outdoors with Owen, hooking me up with some of the merch. Thank you very much. I love the shirt. Go check out his channel, link in the description. Okay guys, so iOS 14 was just released to the public. This is the official release. We are in mid-September as of the recording of this video. Now, iOS 14 brought a ton of changes for both the iPhone and the iPad, uh, but we're gonna be talking about, mainly about accessibility and accessibility for the visually impaired. There really wasn't a ton added in. Uh, VoiceOver got a huge upgrade. We're gonna talk about that. And then there's a couple other things here and there that I think can be pretty helpful. Probably the biggest addition to the accessibility on iOS 14 is the back tap gesture. Back tap allows you to either double tap or triple tap the back of your iPhone and perform an action. You can set it to launch an app, you can set it to launch an accessibility feature, there's lots of different things you could choose and it can be pretty helpful. It's, it's essentially going to add two more pushable buttons so to speak, to your iPhone. Now this is only available on iPhone, it's not available for iPads, and it's also only available for the more recent iPhones. So I believe iPhone 10 and above. So we wanna go into accessibility. Accessibility features help you. Button, rose board to 11 of 22. Go down to touch. Touch, button, assistive touch, off. Button. And the back tap is all the way at the bottom, the very last option in the list here. Back tap. Let's go back into tap. there. On. I've double got tap. It turned on. Voice over. And I already button. have two of them set. I've got one set for the double tap and one set for the triple tap. For my double tap, I've got voice over set to it. Now, I traditionally had that set to the home button on older devices and these newer devices that don't have a home button, I've had the triple click of the power button here on the side as my voiceover, turning voiceover on and off. But I set it to this because I think a double tap of my finger on the back is a little bit more convenient. I don't have to reach up with my other hand. For me personally, I think it's just gonna work better. But let's go in here and I'll show you some of the different options you have. None. Accessibility shortcut. System. App switcher. Control center. Home. Lock screen. There's just a lot of different options in here. Um, you can even use it to turn up the volume, turn down the volume. You can even use it for scrolling. You double tap and your the menu or whatever the list scrolls up. That's pretty cool. We now we get into the accessibility here. This is where voiceover is. You can set it for the magnifier. Classic invert. Magnifier. Smart invert. Speak screen. Selected. Voiceover. Just a lot of cool stuff in here that you can choose. Roast shortcuts heading the one though that i think has a ton of potential is the shortcuts so assigning one of these gestures to perform one of your shortcuts and uh, for me i have a bunch in here that have to do with seeing ai i've got seeing ai on my phone and so what color is this what does this say what color is this what does this say those are all shortcuts that come with the seeing ai um, but so you could really go crazy with this create some really cool shortcuts that can be performed just by double tapping or triple tapping on the back of the phone so i'll demonstrate so my double tap is set to voiceover so you see books maps voiceover is turned on right now but if i double tap voiceover off turns voiceover off double tap again voiceover on facetime turns it back on works really really well my triple tap I've got set to Siri. What time is it? It's 7.39 p.m. I also wanted to talk about the new interface for Siri. The whole, one of the big themes for iOS 14 is minimalism and not to be intrusive. So Siri is a perfect example of that. Now when you trigger Siri, you just get a little animation at the bottom. 
Uh, it doesn't take you out. It doesn't overtake the entire screen. It doesn't take you out of wherever you are. You just get a little animation. And that's going to be good, I think, ultimately, but I'm having a hard time getting used to it uh, because I kind of rely on that um, complete dark screen of Siri's interface to let me know that I did something, uh, especially if I don't have voiceover turned on. So, for example, when I trigger Siri now, she popped up down there at the bottom, I had that little animation, that little glowing orb thing, but there's no sound, there's no, the screen doesn't change. I don't notice that little animation at the bottom because of the all the icons. Several times I've thought maybe I didn't trigger it correctly, but she was down there listening the whole time anyway. And so, like I said, it's just gonna take a little bit of getting used to. So if that is annoying you, like it's annoying me, <laughs> you can turn that off. You can go back to the way it was. You're gonna go into accessibility and then down to Siri. Siri, button. Type to Siri, off. And then uh, towards the bottom. Rows five to six, listen for Hey Siri with always. Show apps behind, allows, show apps behind Siri, there on. Is. Show apps behind Siri, and that's turned on. I'm going to turn it off. Off. And then now, if I triple click or triple tap, you see I get that dark screen again, the way that I like it. So, just a personal preference. So, the next one I want to talk about is sound recognition. Uh, now, this is more for hearing impairment. But this would be a good option for anyone with ushers, the you know deaf blindness. Basically, what it will do is you can set it to where the phone or the tablet will be listening for certain sounds. Hearing devices, sound recognition off. Sound recognition off. 5.1 MB used. Your iPhone will continuously listen for certain sounds, and using on device intelligence, will notify you when sounds may be recognized. So we can come in here. Alarms heading. And it's got a whole list of different sounds that you can choose. Fire, off. Siren, off. Smoke, off. Animals, heading. Smoke, off. What does smoke sound like? <laughs> I don't know, they must have a sound for that. Animals, heading. Cat, water running. People, baby crying, off. So yeah, lots of really good sounds in here that would be important for somebody to be aware of and be, and be listening for. Also having to do with sound, they've added in some new options when it comes to fine tuning the sound you get through your AirPods. So if someone has a hearing impairment where they can't hear certain tones, frequencies, the high pitch or the low tones, you'll be able to adjust the sound for the AirPods much more. So pretty much all of these are going to be the same on the iPad, except the back tap. Uh, the iPad doesn't have that functionality. We got to talk about the new upgrade to VoiceOver, and that's VoiceOver recognition. Basically what that is, is VoiceOver now will use super powerful AI processing to identify with much greater accuracy the items on the screen. So where this becomes very helpful is in all the different apps and web pages that maybe the buttons aren't always marked, uh, sliders aren't marked. In the past, voiceover might just say button, 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 or maybe wouldn't read what it is at all. Now, it's going to use that AI recognition to try and figure out exactly what that button is and give you some information about it. Uh, this also works really well in photos. Voiceover for a while now will describe what's in photos but now it does a much better job. So I wanted, I was trying to find some examples to show you guys, um, but I, don't, I couldn't find too many websites that stuff wasn't labeled correctly, which is good, that, that's great for the websites. So you'll know the AI recognition is working because it gives this little bell sound effect. Like if I tap on this, I think this is a video. Hollywood unions, studios agree on rules to start production. Link, image, article, Landmark, blue sky. There, it gave that little beep and gave you a little bit more information than it normally would have. Let's see what this one is. Cal Penn hopes for dialogue with new show for young voters. Link, image, article, landmark, adult, bow tie, necktie. <laughs> bow tie and necktie on that one. Photo 35 of 36, adult, beanie, home. <laughs> Photo 24 of 36, 
camera, computer monitor. 9162365 Switch network. So that voiceover recognition is definitely a welcome upgrade for voiceover. Okay, and then finally, I will mention the widgets. So now on iOS 14, you have the ability to add widgets to your home screen. And this is pretty cool. This is a, something that Apple users have been wanting to have uh, for many, many years now. <laughs> and this opens up a lot of possibilities for accessibility. So I'm not gonna go into that in this video because I'm gonna do a dedicated video to widgets very, very soon. So stay tuned for that, but I thought I would mention it here as well. Okay guys, so that was a look at the accessibility features, the new accessibility features on iOS 14. If you guys have any questions or want to let me know what your favorite accessibility feature is, leave those in the comments down below. If you found the video helpful, please hit the like button and don't forget to share it on social media. Once again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications. As always, guys, this is Sam with The Blind Life, and I will see you next time.